Rodney Towns on the move out of Minnesota. Who's Carl? <laughs> Don't know who that is. Don't know who that is. One of the biggest stories of the weekend took place in Charlotte when Carl Anthony Towns took the court as a New York Nick. The NBA season is beginning and the new look Knicks are starting to think title or bust because Carl Anthony Towns changes everything for the New York Knicks. Seriously, this might have been the most insane trade in recent memory. First off, the timing. The trade was officially announced by the team on October 2nd, only 20 days before the start of the NBA season. That's a pretty short turnaround for a new team. And is there a bigger culture shock than going from Mini to Manhattan? Cat grew up only a few miles away in Jersey, so he might fit right in if New Yorkers let him. We'll break down why it's a perfect fit in a minute, but this was so out of left field, even Cat himself was blown away. Why do you think this happened so quickly? From the Knicks perspective, it makes sense. They have wanted to move on from Julius Randle ever since that 2022 dud of a season and Cat fills their size need. But for Minnesota, weird timing. Cat and Anthony Edwards had just started to feel like a real one-two punch. I mean, I think everybody know Cat, my brother. Um, so that definitely hurt. Um, but you know, it's a business, so I just gotta roll with it. It's gonna be a bummer to never see these guys win together. You have to lose at a bigger stage, usually. Teams usually- It's the playoffs, we lost last year. <laughs> we lost the last two years, shit. <laughs> God damn, how much more we gotta lose? Yeah, how much you want us to lose? We've been losing for 20 years. <laughs> Cat was essentially sent over for Randall and Dante DiVincenzo. Losing Dante will hurt the Knicks, but getting Towns is everything, especially when you remember how insane that playoff run last year was. Because no matter how much you deny it, nobody thought Jalen Brunson could single-handedly win a title, least of all Becky Hammond. If your best player is small, you're not winning. John Stockton, Allen Iverson, Steve Nash, you could go down the list. Steph Curry, Curry. <laughs> is the only he does, but he's not that small. But he, but he's he, not that small. People got upset, but yes, small point guards never win titles. You might say Steph Curry, Steph isn't small. And if your argument is, well, Steph did it, you're gonna lose that argument. Brunson ain't Steph. Isaiah Thomas is the only undersized point guard to be the best or even second best player on a title team. And you know how they did that? By flanking him with size. Rick Mahorn, John Sally, Bill Lane Beer, James Edwards, and Dennis Rodman. Now that is a front line. The Knicks did not have that last year, and it would have only gotten worse. Mitchell Robinson can't be trusted to stay healthy for a full year. He's a big bruiser who really exemplified old school hoops, but he has also played more than 60 games one time in the last four years. Letting Hartenstein walk to the Thunder may have been a mistake if the cat trade hadn't worked out. Julius Randle is technically a big, but he doesn't protect the rim and he is consistently choking in the playoffs. The Knicks thrived last year in the postseason when Randle wasn't playing, but when they matched up against the Pacers, they fell short in seven for one simple reason. They ran out of bodies. Brunson specifically was putting up heavy minutes in the postseason game after game even for a guy without injury history. That is just not fair to expect an undersized player to have to drop 32 points a game for two months. So when the season wrapped, the Knicks knew they needed three things, a second star, a big man, and Julius Randle gone. They got their second star a few months ago in the McCall Bridges trade. But what the heck is wrong with his shot? Bridges at the free throw line. Anyway, little did we know, we were about to get a third star before the season even started. Because after the Bridges trade, expectations were high. Yeah! Though my man may be biased, Stephen A makes some points. Chemistry matters, reliability matters, consistency matters, defense, defense matters. The brother can shoot, the brother can play. I'm sorry, I like this move by the New York Knicks. He's young. He's energetic, he's seasoned, he defends, and he fits right in the, to the culture of the New York Knicks. 
We already said that the Knicks would have been the best team in the East after the Bridges trade. It's between them, the Celtics, and maybe the Bucks. The Celtics are probably gonna coast before turning it on in the playoffs. And why do we think the Bucks are going to be better than last year? Anyway, the Knicks upgraded their roster in the best way possible with the Bridges trade. Not some overpriced superstar, but the perfect glue guy and potential all-star with playoff experience and chemistry with his team. But now that they have Cat, the sky is the limit title or bust well when you look at the ability to add an all-star caliber player uh, an all nba type player uh, right at the beginning of the season to a team that was a threat uh, to you know to to win the east last year i mean this is the kind of move that really the knicks have been looking for for years uh, they turned out to develop their own superstar with jalen brunson and this is sort of the complimentary superstar this is what you need in the nba two high talent players who can play together Carl Towns and Jalen Brunson. That is the biggest thing. They can play together without taking away from what makes each one special. When the Suns built their super team, it was around three guys who need the ball to be useful. Carl Anthony Towns proved last year that he is more than capable of being a complimentary scorer. He once called himself the greatest big man shooter of all time, which no but he is an incredible stretch threat. With a lot of big guys in this era, you want them to remember their big more often. Cat should be dominating the paint against some teams, but he can also light it up from three if you sag off of him. The only thing we don't want to see is one of Cat's patented over aggro drives to the basket where he commits a dumb offensive foul, but he has something he never had once in his career. Two great scoring threats beside him. He won't feel the need to try and play hero ball when Brunson's leading the offense, right? Right? Honestly, Cat might actually lead the team in scoring, even with Brunson on the team, while still being willing to defer in the biggest moments which is why this trade was so important for the Knicks. It takes so much pressure off of Brunson. Yes, the big man factor is important, but the thing the Knicks needed the most was a solid 20 points a game guy who was willing to defer in clutch moments. Not a guy who rolls his eyes when he doesn't get a touch, Julius Randle. If done right, the pick and pop between Brunson and Cat, with Bridges hiding out on the wing and Josh Hart running baseline can be the most deadly play in the entire NBA. And if it is, they might be the best team in the NBA, let alone the East. Do you think the Knicks can legit win a title? At the very least, you know they are going to be a killer defensive team, as Tibbs teams always are. But can he get some of the blame for the Knicks' upsetting end last season? After all, Tom Thibodeau is consistently playing great players big minutes, and his heavy practice schedules are infamous. Can he shoulder some of the blame for the team's injury-riddled collapse? Just look at the Chicago Bulls a decade ago for proof. Luol Deng, Joe Kim Noah, and of course Derrick Rose all had either short peaks or abrupt ends to their stardom while playing for Tibbs. Is that a coincidence? Maybe. And the Derrick Rose path is one we do not want to see for Brunson. But imagine if Rose ever had that second scoring superstar on his team, let alone an arguable third. Now that Tibbs has a deep swath of superstars, on his squad. Do you think the injury concerns will be diminished? Of course, Cat is all too familiar with Tibbs' schedule, having played for him from 2017 to 2019. Jimmy Butler was there too and reminded the young star that he is lazy and doesn't care enough. But that was five years ago. How much different are you at 28 than at 23? The NBA GM survey just came out. And with that, an annual reminder that one time, GMs voted Carl Anthony Towns as the player they'd most want to start a franchise with with. That may have been insane, but it showed how high his ceiling was. If he manages to up the IQ, work harder than he did the last time he played with Tibbs, and agreed not to be the star of the show, his team will make some noise deep in the playoffs. Do you think it'll be enough to end the Knicks' 50-year title drought? Too bad the Nova Knicks won't be to win it together anymore. Getting rid of DiVincenzo is a huge bummer for the Knicks. Remember how fun that summer was post-Bridges trade? How were you able to break down the paint yet again? here it must be uh it must be a villanova thing we know why it needed to happen but still a bummer for a second it seemed like there was some bad blood in this preseason game leader on the team having a big impact on and he even needed to be separated from rick brunson jalen's dad and a knicks coach the nova knicks no more it was a contentious reunion for dante divincenzo and his former knicks coaches last night jawing at 
the bench multiple times throughout the game in an altercation with Rick Brunson after the game. But he also gave his old buddies a few hugs. So maybe we just chalk it up to a heat of the moment kind of thing. Here's hoping the Knicks find a way to get DiVincenzo back on the squad. But even if they can't, they already changed their franchise for the better with the cat trade. Maybe, just maybe, this is one of those trades where nothing is ever the same. Do you think the Knicks are title bound? Do you think the DiVincenzo blow up wasn't a big deal? Or will we see a fight December 19th? Let us know in the comments and watch one of these videos next. Listen to the wrong opinion, useless NBA trivia and garbage rankings for more more NBA content.